God bless you. So today, we're going to look at a serious topic. We're going to encourage, strengthen, and prepare. And strengthen and courage for what? That's right. You're ready to lose your head. Are you prepared to walk the narrow path? Are you ready? Can you endure, persevere to the end? Seek God and lean on your own understanding. For though we look for God's kingdom come, and we know the wages of sin is death, we cling to life so much. And people are afraid of what is coming, and many will fall away because of it. But why fear what is to come? Look at the encouragement that is here in this book to guide and strengthen. Be faithful unto death and learn the crown of eternal life. For now, if we go to Romans chapter 14 verse 8. For if... We live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. Therefore, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. Alive or dead, I am God's. Matters not what happens, as long as his will be done and his kingdom come. And his kingdom will come. So, do not be concerned. For remember this, when you were that worried. For look at this world, it's only going to get worse. It's going to get more scary for those that are unprepared. Which is why you need your spiritual armor on every day. You need Psalm 91, for God is your refuge. He is your shelter, your strong arm, your protection, your shield, your constancy. You need him for everything. In Psalm 23, though I walk through the shadow of the valley of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Remember that. Trust in him. Believe in him. Even if it costs you your life. For persecution is coming worldwide. Now, those of us that have never seen it, never had it, never experienced it, so they are unready for it. I've come from a far harsher background than some. Life has always just been survival. But finding God, there is peace and joy in it. Now, Revelations, we're going to go to chapter 21. We're going to read and realize what is to come. Verse 4. And verse 4. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. All these terrible things that we know and have endured in this life, they're going to be gone. Everything we've had to go through, All the pain and all the suffering, it will all be done away with. Be encouraged. This is what you look forward to. God's kingdom, his will be done. His kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. And from this, what can we find if we go to the book of John chapter 11? The book of John chapter 11. What are we reading? Let's find out together. What verse? 25 to 26. And Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. 
Do you believe this? I want you to think about that. Do you believe this? Is this in the center of your heart? Is God's laws written in your heart? Are you prepared? Do you believe this? If you stand there and they say, well, all you have to do is renounce your faith and you can go in your jolly way. What are you going to do? Are you going to do that? Or are you going to kneel down and put that head ever forward and say, well, do what you have to do. For it is not I that lives, that he that is greater than I who lives in me. Do as you will. For God first and foremost. Trusting in the Lord every step of the way. Now. Matthew 10, 28. Just to sober us up for those who think, you know what. I think I might try and take those extra couple of days. Those extra couple of years. To live on this world. But what does it cost you? For verse 28 in Matthew 10. And do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. But rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Now sober you up. My man in front of you is dangling a, a carrot, so to speak, saying, if you take this, you can go in your merry way. But if you don't, there's a nice little camp over here you can go to. And you're like, well, you know what? I'll take the carrot. But you take that carrot. There's a God, a holy God, a just God that will judge. And he is a flaming fire of wrath against those that turn from him. And he can destroy both body and soul in hell. Be aware not to mock God, for he will not be mocked. So be faithful, endure, persevere. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except for through the Son. Do not deny him, or he will deny you before the Father. Be prepared to risk all for the greatest of rewards. No guts, no glory, so to speak. Now, as we continue in, we will go to Romans chapter 8. And in Romans chapter 8, we're going to read verses 38 and 39. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Stay faithful. What does it matter? Nothing will separate you. Be faithful unto the end. Now, Jesus did not go out fighting. Did you ever see him fight? It wasn't an action film, The Life of Jesus. I can't imagine such a thing, can you? No, he went across the world selflessly, helping lovingly, kindly, casting out demons, healing the sick and the lame, preaching the word to bring others to God. Didn't fight his way out to get away from crucifixion. He made his way towards crucifixion to create the new covenant, to take the punishment of our sins that we may live. He picked up his cross for us, so we pick up our cross for him. Do not fear what is to come. Now, Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. 
Oh, pages are getting stuck. There we go. Verse 20, where are we? I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. So, he is greater than I. He works in your life. He guides you. Do not fear. Be encouraged. Persevere. Endure. Overcome. There is much in this world. Look at all the things in Old Testament, New Testament. All things people endured for the word of God. Did Paul run away? No. He knew he was to go in chains. And he went and continued on. And in chains he went. Did Jesus not tell Peter, you will go and they will take you where you would rather not go and they will tie upon you? Do you remember these things? Did not all his disciples, as they went on their way, did they not lose their lives preaching his word? Did they deny him to live an extra day? Or did they die gloriously? For the word of God. Be sober. Be strong. We are waiting for the, the kingdom to come. That God's will be done on this earth. We are waiting diligently, faithfully and lovingly, soberly. Always keeping our eye at watch that we be ready on the day of his coming, whether we sleep or awake. Now, as we continue in, Revelation 14, 13, the importance of it all. Then I heard a voice from heaven saying to me, Right blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labours and their works follow them. This is why in the verse before you need patience. For here is the patience of the saints. Here are those who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Peacefully, lovingly. Galatians 5, 22, 23. The fruits of the Spirit. Let God work in you gracefully. Don't resist God. Don't grieve the Spirit. Seek His love, His peace and His joy. Trust in Him. Do not doubt. I see there are those that are afraid and are worrying about what is to come. Those that say, should I not pick up my weapon and fight? Did Jesus fight? No. He went peaceably. He knew what was to come. For the coming kingdom of God is at hand. Don't be ruled by the flesh, for it is fear. And perfect love casts out fear. Fear makes you want to fight. Fear makes you want to retaliate. But it is in love that you don't fight. For they are lost, you pray for the lost. That they see the error of the ways. That they turn from them, come to repentance and faith. There is much to be done. There was, I do not remember the preacher's name, but there is a book on a preacher during the time of the gulags in Russia where they were gathering the Christians and arresting them. And there was a specific preacher and he was, I think it was nine to ten years. And every day the prison warden would come to his room 
and would beat him. And every day he would say, God bless you. After the nine years, this prison warden that always came to the room to beat him said to him, Why do you always bless me? I have beaten you for years. I have treated you terribly. That preacher told him, You're lost. You know not what you do. He told that man the gospel. That man that beat him for all them years came to Christ that day. Long suffering. For there will be those that know not what they do. And they will do it against you. As they do it against me. Long suffering. Fruits of the Spirit. Learn your Bible. Now... 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verses 6 to 8 So we are always confident knowing that while we are at home in the body we are absent from the Lord For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, yes, well pleased rather, to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. It would be better to lose our bodies than to be with God than to keep the body and stay in this world. Do you understand? He's waiting for his faithful to come home. Stay faithful unto death. Now, First Thessalonians four thirteen from verse thirteen. But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. So, those that are asleep, those that lose their life and believe in Jesus, they will be raised up. Do not be discouraged, but be encouraged. You should know in Psalm 116 and in verse 15 what does it say let's find out verse 15 precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints precious something beyond measure Something special. You are precious. Perseverance. Endure. Overcome. You are precious in the sight of God. So don't fear. Don't try and make your life into an action film thinking you'll save your life. You will but lose it. Jesus' life wasn't made into a film, an action film, with a certain man saying, I'll be back. Wouldn't have been the same, would it? No. Jesus suffered. He endured. He knew what was to come, and he took it gladly. He picked up his cross, so we'll pick up ours, and we will follow gladly. We are not afraid to lose this, the crown of eternal life. For Revelation chapter 2, verse 10. Do not fear any of those things which you are about to suffer. Indeed, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison, that you may be tested, and you will have tribulation ten days. 
Be faithful unto death, and I will give you the crown of life. Be faithful unto the end. Look at John the Baptist. He cried aloud in the desert to make the path straight. How was he rewarded by the earth, by the world? They chopped his head off. But, what does it say? Psalms 116, verse 15. Precious are the saints in the eyes of the Lord. Do you think any one of you will be forgotten by God? He knows the hairs on your head. He knows everything. Preach lovingly and kindly. Share the word, prepare, endure, overcome. Bring others to faith so that they will not have to endure what is hell. Don't be disheartened, but be encouraged in the body of Christ. For if one suffers, we all suffer. If one rejoices, we all rejoice. And we pray for one another unceasingly. May this study help encourage you and sober you. For there are many that have different views and do they not see what's happening? People saying, well, we're, we're going to be taken away. We're not going to go through any trouble of any kind. But Jesus said in Matthew 24, the tribulation of those days. And in John 16:33, you will have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I overcame the world. So be of good cheer. Listen to Jesus. Do not be afraid. Do not fear. For just as when Peter started to fear and have doubt, he started to sink when he was walking on the water, for he became afraid. And that doubt made him sink. And then Jesus immediately grabbed his hand and said, Why did you doubt? Jesus is with you every step. The restrainer will be removed. Put on your spiritual armor and pray daily. Pray for your spiritual armor so that you will be able to resist the wiles of the enemy. For he will exhaust you if you are not prepared. He will grind you as dust, as a great millstone. So do not be unprepared. Instead, stay prepared. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 to 20. Your spiritual armor, you will need it that you may be strong enough, encouraged enough to speak as boldly as you ought. And Psalm 91, your refuge, your protection, your safety, God, and Psalm 23. Pray these in your life daily. Be encouraged, be strengthened. Do not fall away. God bless you all.